and I'm so delighted to be back with you today and I am so excited because I have somebody special with us today oh my goodness I cannot even start to introduce her so I'll let her take this opportunity to introduce herself and tell us her name who her parents are and where she lives and how old she is welcome to our show Tell us your name. Hi, thank you so much. I am Sidel Nachiganda Buyungo. My parents are Sarah and Boniface Buyungo. I'm from Denver, Colorado, and I'm 18 years old. Wow, 18 years old. And as you can see, she has something on her head, right? Yes. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Sidel, I'm so, so happy for you, class of 2023. How does it feel to be a graduate and you do have a diploma? How did you feel when you received that diploma? Um, I remember I was really nervous. I was like one of the first people in line. So I was like, oh my gosh, I'm like the first one. So I was really nervous at first. But um, it was kind of a blur. You get the diploma and it's such a big moment. It's like, whoa, crowning achievement getting through high school. So I, I still feel really excited about it. Really oh. excited. And how did that make Dad and Mom feel? Oh, so excited. They were right along with me. Super excited. So who, you, who do you think screamed the most? Definitely Mom. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I knew that. I knew that I, it had to be Mom. Mom's always just, you know, yeah. yeah I, I probably would be doing the same in, uh, you know, four or five years here. So, uh, Sidel, tell me something. If you had, what talent would you have loved to have that you do not have? Oh, and why? Is it like any talent, like any kind of talent that you probably are like, I would have loved to have this and maybe I don't, you know? Hmm. Could it be like supernatural talent or yeah. like just anything? Anything. anything. Yep. Um, it would be really cool to be able to like manipulate time. So like to pause things mm. when I wanted to, like in the middle of a class and they're like, okay, turn in your homework. And you're like, whoa, pause. Yep. And you can go back home, do what uh -huh. you need to do, come back. Or you can speed things up, you can slow things down, go back to your favorite moments. I'm with you on that one, because yeah. when I need, you know, we all know sometimes I'm running a little late. So I would be using some of your, you know, See? talent too. I have another one for you. So if you had a pet parrot, what word would you want it to learn and why? Ooh. Um, I feel like just... Hello. I think that would be kind of cute. Every every single time that anybody comes in the room, it just keeps on saying hello, just over and over and over again. You've already said hi to the parrot, it won't stop, it's still saying hello. you got to keep talking to it. I think that would be funny, because then people are like, oh, I thought I already said hello, and nope, parrot's still talking to you. So You know, I got reminded of this pet parrot that was at the zoo. I literally read this about two weeks ago, that got removed from the zoo, because it was an African parrot at that. <laughs> not saying the right words. <laughs> so, they so they took it away. <laughs> they moved it. I just remembered that and I'm like, oh my god, why the African part? <laughs> <laughs> so we have to be careful what we teach. You know, parrots are notorious for repeating stuff. Mm -hmm. And the thing that's so sad, they always repeat the thing you don't want them to repeat. Every time. Every time. <laughs> yeah. So that's interesting. Oh, well, okay, we'll get back on topic. I gave myself a laugh there. <laughs> for both of us, for that matter. <laughs> so how does it feel, um, you know, being out of school? And what would you say was your favorite subject? Ooh. Um, okay, well, I love history. That's like my favorite thing. I really love history, but what I love about it is kind of being able to dive in and see how things in the past like directly relate to things happening now. So there was actually an English class that I had. I took it my junior year and senior year where the teacher really took this perspective where we were able to look inside ourselves but also the world around us and see like what things have happened that have led us to being the people that we are now, mm. what people do we dream to become later on and how can we curate that image but also take care of like who we are now and the things that we've been through so i think that's a brilliant way i think that's yeah. such a good teacher when you say it that way it takes me back and thinking of history 
Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that was one of my good subjects as well. I love yeah. history. It was hard to remember the years sometimes, but oh. overall, I think that's one of the subjects I loved. And also, as you were in high school, who would you say, or what leader do you think that you, that has been one that has spoken to you or to your life or how you live your life, or what teacher do you think really was very instrumental while you were in high school and what are their names, if it's a leader or if it's, if it's a teacher? Mm. Um, well, kind of two. I have one who knew me at the beginning of high school. He was my freshman uh, history teacher. Very fitting. Mm -hmm. But um, his name is Mr. Kevin Fox. Uh, Hello, he... Mr. Kevin Fox. <laughs> <laughs> he was just really great at knowing what students needed and really good at meeting them where they were at. He, of course, was kind of like a tough love type of teacher where he expected a lot from you, but also understood where you were coming from and really worked to make students think about themselves in a way that, oh, I'm not just my grade or I'm not just this percentage that I'm going to get. I'm a whole human being and the point of school is really to learn. And then this year, my counselor, Miss Dana Hoig, um, she, was the best. Like, I would come and talk to her, not just about school, but just about things in my life. She would remember Aww. things about my life. She'd be like, oh, you're babysitting this weekend, right? And I'd be like, oh, yeah. It was, at first I was like, why did you remember? She's That's like, oh, well, cool. I just care. Yeah. And I thought that was the best thing. She just really cared about me. Mm -hmm. And we would just talk on and on about things that we were excited about or things that we want to experience and she just really cared so I think that's a beautiful thing I think you know it speaks volumes to have somebody like that mm -hmm. but I think sometimes when we are also good people people you're relatable so because you have a you know good character she's of course drawn to you because of that mm -hmm. I'm sure there's some you know sometimes when kids are also hard to deal with I bet you teachers are told to really know how to deal with you know children mm -hmm. in, in general but I think it also speaks to you as a person so kudos to you on that one. Yeah. So maybe the other thing I wanted to ask you, of course we've been through the pandemic, how do you feel the pandemic affected you and um, you know during your time of you know being in school? Yeah. yeah, definitely I was all online for a year, my school like we had a period where we were all online but then kids could also go back I chose to be online for all of my sophomore year so then coming back in person it was really weird at first definitely spending all that time alone it was really nice to kind of get a break from all high school drama but it was really weird coming back and I feel like the main thing with the pandemic is that it kind of showed all of us that these institutions and these things that we put so much weight and so much purpose into, they're not always going to be there to keep us safe mm -hmm. or even to like give us strength when we really rely on them. Like schools were shut down, hospitals were flooded, all of these institutions that we had placed so much weight mm -hmm. and trust into could no longer help us. Yeah. So it was such a turning moment coming back to school and being like, why am I here? Like, I have to have intention in being at school. Because who knows, in the next year, we might not be able to be in this building. Mm -hmm. We might not be able to talk to these people as easily. We might not be able to leave our houses. I have to go to school with the intention of, I'm in a place to learn. What do I want to learn? Right. And that was the thing where I had a big turning point in even choosing my classes and the things I wanted to do. I knew that what I wanted to do had to be purposeful. Right. Do I am I taking this because I want more AP credits or am I taking this because I care about the subject? Mm -hmm. And by thinking about that for my last two years of high school, I really like made all of my classes more to things that I enjoyed and I loved to do so that I could fall in love with learning, not just fall in love in being in a school. Yeah. So I think you, you, you just you know, you really say it so well. I feel that, you know, with the pandemic, you put things into perspective and you realize, okay, why am I doing this? Okay, mm -hmm. where am I headed? Do I really need to do this? You know, and then just the relationships that we have even with our families. You know, you learn to slow down, enjoy the moments, you know, yeah. and then, you know, take it all, you know, take it from there. Oh, that, that was such a frustrating time, I think, for so many people. And I completely understand, you know, where you're coming from. 
Um, well, moving along, what do you think, what memory brings you the most joy when you think about high school? Ooh, okay, well, my senior year, I chose to take a couple free periods, which was such a good idea, <laughs> I highly recommend, <laughs> and um, two of my really good friends, I wasn't as close to them at the beginning of the year, but we all had the same period off together, so we just talk, we meet up a little bit, and quickly, those periods that we had off became like our time to just do something fun. One time we went to a bakery and tried these pies. Another time we went to like a horse ranch and we rode horses. And this is just during the school day. We were like, why not? Or like we went to a bookstore and we checked out some books. And those moments are my favorite because they were little gaps in my day every day to remind me that like, life is still happening. Like I'm getting really stressed about all this school work and all the things I have to do, but life still exists. I can still find joy in my life and with people that I really connect with. And those people are like some of my closest friends. Oh, so. I, I love that. And when now we've done the joy part of it, <laughs> what do you think has been the hardest thing for you while in high school, minus the pandemic? Mm. Or the, you know, like a challenge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Really, at times, it was finding, like, the why for things that I'm doing. Even, like, friendships or, like, friend groups that I'd be part of. I'd be, like, part of groups that maybe, like, weren't the best, like, really toxic, negative people. And I'd be like, well, I have to be friends with them. I have to be with them. But why? Like, why do I have to be with them? Or even with assignments that I had to do. I was like, I don't even want to do this. I don't want to be here. I don't want to put in the effort now. And senioritis is very real. <laughs> so it. <laughs> it was just the challenge of finding the why. Or even things within my school. Like, I would try to work on initiatives for, like, student leadership and mm -hmm. expanding, like, the equity of arts resources within my school. But nobody even like wanted to help me. Nobody cared. So I'm like, why am I fighting so hard for mm -hmm. these things? So it was the challenge of really coming back to myself and being like, well, these are things that are important to me. And if it's important to me, then it's worth fighting for. Right. But it was really, it's always really hard to fight for that, especially when it feels like everything is fighting against you. Yes. So that was the most challenging thing for me. I, I, I hear you. I think challenges do come, and you explained it so, so perfectly, because, um, you know, sometimes you ask yourself the why, and then you realize, you know, the answers, you know, are right there when you sit down and think on it, mm -hmm. and um, you just realize, okay, I'm leaving life, yeah. and I'm going to do the best I can, and eventually, with God on your side, and with, you know, your parents and the support that you have, you will get there. Yeah. And that brings me into asking you this question. How do you think culture has, you know, guided you on your course as, uh, you know, you're doing high school? Or, um, of course, knowing that your parents are from Uganda, mm -hmm. um, how do you feel that that has, you know, do you feel like it has benefited you so much or do you feel like it's been challenging? I feel like especially in high school, it has benefited me so much to a degree that like I can't even really explain. I bring in aspects of my culture and my identity. I just feel so proud of it. Like I am proud to say that I am a Ugandan American girl, like here living in America. It's something that I'm proud of. And I love to bring it out in different ways. I took an audio production course and I found it so easy for me to like merge different types of music. People would be like, whoa, I had never heard that. And I was like, hey, that's the thing. Because I feel like I have a great different perspective of what music means, what art means, like what beauty means, because I've grown up in a household that is different from the culture all around me. Yes. And I think in opening my mind to that, I'm so willing to try other things. I'm so willing to bring out parts of myself that are different and still be proud of that. Right. So I've been able to bring it out through my music classes, through like my writing classes. I'll talk about aspects of my culture through like my history classes. I, I just feel like I see the world in a brighter, more colorful way because I'm not just one thing. I am like the mixture of so many so different many things. things. Yeah. That, it is so beautiful to hear. You have no idea. I'm all like going, yay! yay! <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. So tell us.
when you were going to school, did you take the bus? Did you get driven there? Did you walk? And also, what did you do for your extracurricular activities? Ooh, um, well, getting to school, my parents, bless them, they drove me <laughs> like every single day. It was senior year when I had my license and I drove sometimes. Mm -hmm. So I really do thank them for driving me the whole time. Mm -hmm. um, extracurriculars. I did a lot of different ones, but it kind of all comes back to things that I enjoy. Oh, yeah. So I had a friend and we started an SAT and ACT prep club because all the resources to study for these tests are so expensive. Yeah, yeah. Getting a private tutor is so expensive. So oh, we were wow. like, one thing that we can do is kind of like help people out, mm -hmm. tutor them and see what we can do. Mm. So we started that. Um, I was part of a club called Challenge Team 5280. It's among the Denver Public St Schools District. Uh, it's a, basically like student leadership, student led, where students in different schools work to address a certain issue or social injustice within their school. So they work together, we meet across other schools in conferences, and that was just really great to be able to find people who are also passionate about social justice. Um, I also, I was part of South High School and George Washington High School's competitive mm -hmm. gymnastics team mm -hmm. for a bit, and that was really fun. I really enjoyed that, and the people on the team are some of my closest friends. Nice. I was a captain of my speech and debate team. Oh my goodness. And, yeah, <laughs> um, I loved speech and debate. That truly became a family for me at the end of my senior year. Even, like, the partner I debated with, it was so much fun. I really loved that. And, um, yeah, those were, like, my main school extracurriculars. Here and there, oh, I was part of, like, the music equity initiative mm -hmm. at my school, and I did work there as part of orchestra council, so within my orchestra, just leadership there. So kind of just mixing up things that I enjoy. You enjoy. Yeah. And you put them together. Now that brings me to asking you this question. You definitely do play an instrument. Yes. It sounds like it, so you do share. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, I play the cello. Oh. I've been playing for nine years now. That's so. a heavy instrument. <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. And I have this giant case, and it's purple. Wow. And when I was late for school, I wouldn't have time to put it in the orchestra room, so I would leave it in different places around the school. But and I knew it was yours, right? Everybody knew it was mine. Everybody would be like, why is, why is your cello in the lunchroom? I, I just saw it outside the math room. What is it doing? Big purple cello case everywhere around the school. Yeah. I have to tell you a funny story. Run on and <laughs> one and I think I started wanting to play the cello and his dad was like that's such a huge <laughs> I remember that's so why you gotta give mom and dad credit I know that's a huge thing it to is... carry <laughs> yes oh my god you don't want to be late with that <laughs> oh it's the worst it's the I worst. love that you would park him I just, <laughs> nobody <laughs> wanted it right <laughs> musical mm. my favorite I love all the movies I've watched them so many times and it was especially during this year yeah. that like all the high school musical songs would come back so the most important like well-known song like we're all in this together nice and I, I just that. would always remember that so I'd be like hey you know yeah. what things are tough we're all in this, this together. together I like that yeah. there is a musical now that you say that that I loved so much oh my god I can't think of it uh, oh. But you probably, when, if, if it comes to my mind, I'll, remember it. I'll, I'll definitely it. let you know. But I love it so much. Oh, the other thing is, if you could change anything about your experience, what would it be? Ooh. I would probably, at the beginning, I, it took me a while, like later on throughout high school, to really recognize this and like have it sink in. But truly, the most important parts about life 
are the moments that we share with other people and the moments that connect us as human beings. And at the beginning, mm -hmm. I would not really like go out and hang out with people. I was like, I don't really want to not, I am more of an introvert. I like mm -hmm. to stay home. I like to stay with my family, but yeah. it was more like I would stay home out of fear of going out and embracing things with other people. Mm -hmm. So it took me a while later on to be like, there isn't really anything to be scared of because whatever happens happens like the point of life is to experience things and yes, yes you'll fail but yeah. think about what could happen and it's those endless possibilities that make life worth living yes so i would just tell myself take a deep breath it's not that serious just go out and try new things because you never know where you're going to end up and you never know what you're going to enjoy so just make an effort to make those connections with other people and mm -hmm. embrace that that is so beautiful. I don't think we can add anything to that, but before you go, yes. I'm interested to find out what your GPA was mm -hmm. and what college you're going to be attending and um, what are you going to be studying? Okay. Yeah. Um, my GPA was a 5.124, I believe. My brain... I <laughs> My school went all the way to the decimal because <laughs> there were so many of us. They were like, Whoa, gotta get every number. Five point what? Yeah. Oh my yeah. goodness. Drum rolls. <laughs> <laughs> but um, in the fall, I will be attending Yale University. Oh my goodness. Woo! Yeah! I'm so excited. I'm so excited for you oh, too. Thank you. Oh my goodness. Um, I'll be studying global affairs and public health. Oh my so, god. I'm excited. How beautiful. Thank you. And such a topic that we do need. Oh my goodness. Yes. Are you kidding me? Yes. For oh sure. wow. I cannot wait for what God has in store for you. Oh, thank I'm you. so so excited and so happy for you to have come to visit us here. Oh my <laughs> goodness, thank you so much. Be blessed and I'm looking forward to hearing more of your stories and you know, following you at Yale, and no pressure, four <laughs> years, three years down the road, we're going to be back here, yes. and you're going to tell us more congratulations. Thank you so much. Peace.